So much misinformation. Let's clear up sulfate free once and for all. Hello and welcome to the world of Craig. Yes, that's me. I'm Craig and this is my channel where we get into all things hair and sometimes a little bit of beauty. Apologies, I'm a little bit bunged up. I've had a head cold. To end all head colds, but I'm feeling much better. Sulfate, sulfate free to be exact. Recently here on my channel, I did a video that was all about toxic, sorry, lots of air quotes, toxic ingredients. Not many people saw that, but I'll link it down below. I briefly touched on sulfate free, but this keeps coming up again and again and again on my Instagram, which is on screen now. It's not the world of Craig, it's Craig's world of hair, and here on YouTube. So I thought I would make a video just to quash all of these myths, just ridiculous myths that I see time and time again. We're gonna get into it, I'm gonna give you some recommendations of things, of products, yes, that's the one that will be great for your hair, so you need to keep on watching for those. But first up, very, very briefly, apparently sulfate, sulfates, you know, SLS, sodium lauryl sulfate in our shampoo, strip color, that's not true. Not all sulfates are created equally, we'll get into that too. And also they remove keratin treatments. That's not true either. Right, let's get into it. Of course, as always, if you enjoy this video or find it, help or find it helpful, you haven't watched it yet, or find it helpful, you know exactly what to do. Maybe share it with a friend if you think the information might be helpful for them too. All of your engagement is much appreciated. I love my community over here on my channel. So let's go back in time. Let's go back in time about 15 years when keratin treatments, they've been around for a lot longer than that in countries like Brazil and South America, but when they became popular in the Western part of the world, and also when the colour kind of market boomed. Let's go back in time to about 15 years ago. Also, when marketing teams, I'm, I've got nothing against marketing teams, I do some work with some of them, they're all fabulous, but they do like to market things towards us and they need a hook. Marketing teams on the back of the whole natural and free from and organic and all of those things started to market products as being SLS sulfate, sodium lauryl sulfate free. And that's what happened at the same time as the real huge color boom for us as hair professionals. Hello, if you're like me, a hair professional. And also the keratin treatments. It got misplaced somewhere along the line with people saying that if you have a keratin treatment, you need to use a sulfate free shampoo. That is not true. I'm going to tell you what you need to use later on. And also, you know, and I'm going to explain the science too, and also people started saying that if you had colour and it was fading, then you need to use something that doesn't have SLS in it, that's sulfate free. That is not true either. I've had people recently who've told me that I'm wrong, I don't know what I'm talking about. I do because it's science. Right, rant over. Let's do this now. For those of you lovely folks watching this that don't know what sodium neural sulfate is, it is a surfactant. So basically, it reduces the surface tension between oil and water. It does that incredibly effectively. So it's great at removing oil and impurities from the hair. It also does its job very, very efficiently. It's so good at what it does. There are other things that are used as surfactants that aren't quite as good as sodium lauryl sulfate. If you want more in-depth information, I do have other videos. I have that toxic product video that's linked down below, or you can just Google it. Of course, I need to say at this point, not all sodium lauryl sulfate, how many times I'm gonna say that in the video, is created equally. So there will be, you know, I wouldn't suggest that you wash your hair, for example, with dish cleaning solution, because the surfactants in that won't be the right ones for hair. But generally, in modern formulas, the sodium neural sulfate is really, really great. And if you have greasy hair, a greasy scalp, or a finer textured hair, then SLS is a brilliant way to clean your hair. So what is the ingredient that you need to avoid if you're finding that your colour fades or you have a keratin treatment? 
Round of, round of applause. No, I was going to say drum roll, everybody. It's sodium chloride. Yes, salt. Yes, salt. Just normal salt. Salt, sodium chloride, is used as a thickening agent in shampoos. It's a very cheap ingredient, therefore it is used a lot. I had real trouble finding some recommendations for you lovely folks, but I have found some and they're really good. We'll get to those in a second. Think of it really simply, okay? If you have hair colour, a bit more science for you, when that hair colour is deposited in the hair, the colour molecules lock onto the keratin molecules of the hair. That is science, that is how it works, okay? Sodium chloride displaces though that keratin within the hair, so it removes the keratin molecule and also the colour molecule with it, hence colour fade. If you have a keratin treatment that is laminating the hair, the sodium chloride affects the keratin molecule, yes, you've guessed it, removing the keratin treatment quicker from your hair. It won't remove it immediately and it won't make your colour fade immediately, but it will over time. That is the science of sodium chloride and why if you're worried about those things, definitely if you have a keratin, my clients that have keratin treatments don't use sodium chloride on their hair, you need to avoid it. Just to add to that, please don't panic if you have a shampoo that has sodium chloride in it and that you love it. You know, you don't need to throw it in the bin if you really enjoy using it. This video is about trying to dispel some myths and some misinformation, myths, I always find that hard to say, some misinformation that is out there that I'm seeing so much of. Because people comment and leave me and DM me all the time to say, I'm using a product with SLS in it. What should I do, what should I do? It's all about, you know, light and shade and just putting the information out there so that you have it. Right, some recommendations. First of all, let's talk about The Ordinary. This product is eight pounds, I have used it. It's the sulfate 4% cleanser for body and hair. It really lathers up. It has a very, very simple ingredients list. It does contain SLS, that's the whole point of it. It's got no sodium chloride, really good for finer textured hair, for coloured hair, all textures of hair. It's not a super luxurious product because it has a very simple ingredients list. It's also fragrance free and it contains phytic acid. Phytic acid is very interesting. It's a chelator, so it gets rid of product buildup. And it's also an antioxidant and it's very, very good at leveling out the hair's pH, which, which is important for hair's health. Okay, some shampoos can be, some can be a bit alkaline and they're not the best thing for, for hair, but this is, helps to pH balance. A really good formula. I wasn't, wouldn't hesitate to use it. And if you have greasy hair, finer hair, definitely something that you should test out. That was the drugstore, let's do the high end. Next up, something that a lot of you will be familiar with and it's Pureology's Hydrate Shampoo. Now, interestingly, I have used these products. I used them for a long, long time in the salon. I used to rent a chair in. I also did some research and development work with them a long time ago. I'm sure I can say that without getting struck down by the hair gods. The Pureology line was originally, before it was bought by L'Oreal, the original person that formulated formulated it was a hairdresser and he made a line that stopped as well as to help colour from fading. So the Pureology line doesn't contain sodium chloride. The ingredients list, which I will put on screen for a second, is extremely long, extremely long. I know from the work that I did with the brand, it's a very clever formula. It does contain things like, uh, I think we have dimethicone in there somewhere, where are we? He's looking without his glasses on. But yes, it does have dimethicone in it. it. You know, it has sunflower seed extract as well, which is really great to shield that hair color from the sun, but it's sodium chloride free. So if you have a keratin, you could use this as well, but it's also gonna help to retain your color and help stop with color fade, which is what the whole line was all about. I think it's about 25 pounds, $25, something around that mark. Very concentrated, really lathers up. This one is also SLS free. So if you wanted something that was sodium lauryl sulfate free, then this one would be for you. Also worth mentioning that Pureology is completely vegan. So if that is something that's important to you, 
that is that. So last up, and just to, just to reiterate, I'm saying a lot in videos now, and, and I apologize if I repeat myself, but please don't comment and say that you want me to give you a very specific you know, recommendation for something. I can't do that because I can't see you. I'm spending a lot of time, you know, I still reply to everybody. It takes me about an hour a day now, which is fine. I'm willing to do it, but I can't give you specifics because I can't see you and I don't know your hair type. I still say that, but I still get a lot of people who want me to recommend them a specific shampoo or conditioner or leave-in. It just makes it really tricky for me. And I do want to continue to reply to everybody. Now, controversial yet bold, Kerastas, yes, goodness me. Who knew that those videos would be so popular? Their Gloss Absolute, I'm just gonna put this on the screen for a second, which is their Ban Hydra Glaze, if you're in France, that was terrible. But their Gloss Absolute Shampoo, if we pop the ingredients list on screen, where are we? It's not, there we go, not very far down, sodium chloride. It's very interesting, isn't it? This is a shampoo to impart gloss. I'm sure that people with coloured hair might use it. Maybe even, you know, people that have keratins are using it, although it does have sodium lauryl sulfate in it too. I just wanted to put that in here, not to be controversial, but just to show you that something that has a lot of research and development behind it, it does have some great ingredients in there as well, like arginine and salicylic acid. They help to, to balance pH and they do help to give the hair, to fortify the hair, to give the hair strength. It's also got lots of dimethicone in it. It's got citric acid, which is great. Dimethicone makes the hair very slippery. It's got glycolic acid. I would say that like glyco glycolic gloss from LV, that's very hard to say, and the drugstore is very similar to this. I think I've said that in another video, but I just wanted to put that in here because this, I think is about 30 pounds. It's a lot of money for a shampoo. It's got SLS in it, which I think is great, but it has also got sodium chloride. So don't necessarily think that a higher price point Goodness me, did I get some flack when I put that Kerastase video out there. There's some people that are very passionate about it. It's always going to be better because that is not the case. So at the end of the day, as I already said, it's all about personal choice. But I wanted to put the information out there so that you have it so you can make up your own mind. Please be careful where you get your information from because people do like to give people the heebie-jeebies and marketing teams sometimes want to market something to you in a way that it might be slightly misleading. As always, if you've enjoyed this video and found it helpful, you know exactly what to do. Have you got a favourite shampoo that's sodium chloride free? Did you know that SLS is a brilliant surfactant? You know, have you had a keratin that hasn't lasted very long because you didn't know what shampoo to use? I'd love to hear what you think of what we've talked about in the video in the comments. I also have a playlist here on my channel that's called Come Shopping With Me and it's packed full of videos where we go shopping and I look at formulas of products and some of those in those videos might be great suggestions for you. And if you try what we've talked about in this video, I would love to know. It's always great to get feedback from you lovely folks when you've used something. If you've got to the end of the video, a huge thank you. You all take lots of care and I'll see you all in the next one.